Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joe DeLuca, and I'm uh, currently finishing up my first year of uh, a T32 postdoctoral research fellowship at Mount Sinai, and I'm supervised by Dr. Uh, Cheryl Corcoran and Dr. Yulia Landa, and it uh, really is truly an honor to, to be here today and, and receive this award. And I am very excited to discuss uh, combating youth mental health stigma uh, for a bit with you all. So to begin, uh, this is a topic that is uh, near and dear uh, to me, and I have seen firsthand through my research and clinical training uh, how stigma affects people living with mental illness uh, from feeling included in society and being able to achieve their goals. And I'm sure this is something a lot of us have seen uh, in our clinical research work. And uh, my earliest clinical experiences uh, were with adults uh, living with schizophrenia spectrum disorders, uh, one of the most stigmatized mental health conditions. And uh, many of my patients worried that their lives were over after receiving a diagnosis, uh, they could never recover. And I have had similar experiences uh, working with adolescents uh, in inpatient uh, and outpatient settings who uh, also have felt this, this strong sense of difference uh, from others. And, worrying what peers would think, what family members would think, and what even school staff might think of them. And during all of these experiences, I, I really wondered what uh, could I do uh, about the stigma as a clinical psychologist in training. So I realized that I really needed to understand uh, the roots of stigma. So the fear among our patients uh, is largely driven by public mental health stigma, which unfortunately is all around us. Uh, it's in the air. Uh, as stereotype threat researchers uh, would say. And we see the stigma in sensationalist news stories uh, like this one right here uh, from the New York Daily News uh, that perpetuate these negative uh, stereotypes uh, about mental illness. And we know, unfortunately, from the research that many people uh, in the general public uh, believe these negative stereotypes and endorse them. Uh, and in fact, a recent nationally representative study uh, here in the United States uh, found that stigma toward mental illness is on the rise, uh, particularly stigma toward people uh, living with psychosis or psychotic disorders. So overall, there remains this large gap between public perception and reality, and that the vast majority of people diagnosed with mental illness, as we know, are never violent, uh, and that recovery is possible and happens all the time. So this stigma is also transmitted to children and adolescents. And sometimes it's transmitted directly to them. So one review article uh, found that films made for children and adolescents often portray characters with mental illness as violent people to be feared by other characters and as villains. Seen here is just one example. So Cruella in the animated 101 Dalmatians uh, forced into an ambulance that she experiences apparent hallucinations and is transported to a psychiatric hospital. So I, I'd like you all to think about the last time that you saw a positive or even neutral depiction of mental illness in the media. So it, it's hard to think of one. It, it, one. One usually doesn't come to mind right away for people. And, and that's because positive depictions of mental health and stories of recovery are usually not the norm in the media. And these negative uh, depictions really do stick with kids. Uh, in fact, in some ways, this stigma can be more damaging for kids because they're just figuring out their identity, coping with normative self-consciousness and worries, uh, navigating peer relationships, new ways of being with family. Surprisingly, however, very little research has been conducted in this area, uh, and most stigma research is still conducted with adults. Uh, this means that we are really just in the early stages uh, of developing mental health stigma theories uh, and assessment tools uh, with youth. So recognizing this gap, uh, I wrote a narrative uh, review paper, which you could find through the QR code there, uh, in 2019 that synthesized what we know so far about youth mental health stigma. And I found that many adolescents endorse this public stigma, so these stigmatizing beliefs. Uh, many fear negative reactions from peers and family if they were to develop a mental health problem. So what we'd call like anticipated stigma. And a significant number of adolescents also internalize this stigma. In other words, they come to believe that these stereotypes might be true of them if they're experiencing a mental health problem. And all of this in deters many kids from disclosing about their mental health problems and engaging in treatment. 
uh, anticipated and this internalized stigma in particular are among the strongest predictors of help seeking behavior among youth, uh, particularly racial and ethnic minority individuals. Therefore, I argue that there needs to be more youth mental health stigma research and that this research must be grounded in the developmental science literature. Uh, we need to know more about peer and family attitudes and relations, as well as how stigma intersects with youth development, such as identity formation. Additionally, I argue that we need to start acting to interrupt the stigma process among youth. We know that stigma at its root is a social problem and we really need to target these beliefs on a, a public scale, on a public level. And youth are the perfect audience due to increasing cognitive capacities, relatively flexible attitudes and belief systems. Uh, and they're also our future, right? These are, these are people who are going to be going into to politics, other positions. And for my dissertation, I targeted this public stigma uh, by conducting the first uh, randomized control trial of the uh, National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI, uh, their program Ending the Silence uh, in a New York City High School. And this program typically involves uh, two speakers. One is a young person who has uh, lived experience with mental illness who shares their story of recovery. And there's also a family member of someone with mental illness who provides education about mental health and dispels myths about mental illness. And uh, through this trial, I found that over time, this program reduced negative stereotypes, improved mental health knowledge, and also reduced anticipated risk of disclosing to a counselor among this community sample uh, of high school students. And thinking back to my past experiences, I have remained passionate about also targeting stigma on a clinical level. So after doing all this work on public stigma, I was still left with questions about how do we work best uh, clinically with youth who are experiencing, anticipating, internalizing the stigma. And there's really not much guidance out there uh, for targeting this type of stigma among youth either. So currently I work with youth who are at risk for psychosis uh, in their families. And I see stigma come up quite a bit. Uh, these youth are often contending with distressing unusual experiences for the first time, such as hearing or seeing things that others don't, uh, experiences that resemble full psychosis, but don't rise to the same level of frequency or severity. So it's, it's a risk state. And we know from the research so far that this group of youth actually experiences more internalized stigma and perceives more discrimination than youth with other mental health conditions. Uh, and this is likely due to the significant stigma in our society towards psychosis and schizophrenia spectrum disorders. So building on my prior work, uh, my own recent research, uh, which you can find here, uh, with this group and family members has shown that worse family function rated by caregivers is associated with higher internalized stigma. So this is starting to corroborate past studies uh, that demonstrate the negative effects of uh, poor family functioning for you. Uh, and it could have treatment implications for family-based therapies. Uh, we didn't find any cultural differences uh, in this sample, but I do plan to explore that uh, in the future. So thinking uh, also more to the future, uh, I plan to develop a clinical research program uh, to target internalized stigma among youth uh, and empower kids and families to combat this stigma. Specifically, I'm interested in how youth at risk for psychosis cope with this stigma and their families as well as how other marginalized identities may have additive negative impacts for these youth. Uh, thus, I aim to maintain an intersectional lens in my youth stigma research program going forward. Uh, I also remain really interested in understanding how providers can stigmatize, uh, how the media continues to depict, depict psychosis and stigmatize, how structural stigma, so larger level policies, laws and practices impact these youth and families. Uh, and lastly, I plan to conduct a participatory stigma research that will center youth voices and meaningfully involve them in the youth in the uh, research process. So with all of that said, I uh, wanted to thank my fantastic mentors over the years, uh, particularly my PhD advisor, Dr. Phil Llanos, who gave me the opportunity to join his stigma research lab all the way back in 2012 uh, and has inspired me to adapt uh, his adult internalized stigma interventions for youth uh, and wish to thank all the participating youth and families uh, as well as the Future Directions Forum Launch Award Committee for this opportunity. And thanks everyone for listening. Appreciate your time.